Molecules and atoms are countable objects, very much in the same way as people, marbles, and cars are countable objects. And that means that if we do calculations that involve quantities of molecules or atoms, we can use the same methods that we use to calculate quantities of marbles and people. Now, sometimes these calculations involve conversions, conversions of one type of countable object into another type of countable object. Let's look at an example. Let's consider a remote village somewhere in the United States, where each family consists of one son and three daughters. Now, given that there are 27 daughters in this small village, how many sons are there? We can calculate this problem by considering the ratio of sons over daughters. There's one son for every three daughters. That means this ratio is 0.333. Now, using this ratio, I can convert the unit of daughters into the unit of sons. So let's take 27 daughters, multiply that by this ratio. This ratio is now a conversion factor. You see that the unit of daughters is striking out. I convert the unit of daughters into the unit of sons. 27 divided by 3 equals 9 sons. Let's consider a bag of marbles. Each bag contains 4 blue marbles, 5 white ones, and 12 red ones. It is also given that there are 144 red marbles in total. How many blue marbles are there? Can we calculate this? Yes, we can. Intuitively, you could say the following. There are 144 red marbles. Each bag contains 12 marbles. That means 144 divided by 12. There are 12 bags. Each bag contains four blue marbles. That means 4 times 12 equals 48 blue marbles. So there are 48 blue marbles. This answer is indeed correct. But instead of doing it in this fashion, this intuitive fashion, we can do it in a fashion that con considers the ratios between the red and the blue marbles. This problem really is a conversion problem. I can convert the number of red marbles, 144, into the number of blue marbles by considering the ratio between the two. Here's the ratio, four blue marbles for each 12 red marbles. This, therefore, is a conversion factor. It converts the unit of red marbles into the unit of blue marbles. Note that the unit of red marbles will be striking out. Completing this calculation, we find, again, 48 marbles. These type of calculations also hold for molecules and atoms. Let's look at the following example. Here there is a sample of aluminum sulfate. Given that the... the uh, man. Sorry. Victor. <laughs> These type of calculations also apply to molecules and atoms. Let's look at an example. Here we have a sample of aluminum sulfate, an ionic compound. It contains aluminum ions and sulfate ions. Now, given that we have 2.0 moles of sulfate ions, can I determine how many moles of aluminum ions I have? The answer is yes. This problem is very similar to the previous. I have two types of countable objects, sulfide ions and aluminum ions. Knowing the amount of one, I can calculate the amount of the other one. Here's how it works. 2.0 moles of sulfate ions. I want to convert moles of sulfate ions into moles of aluminum ions. I can do that by multiplying this number by the ratio. This is called the mole ratio in this case. So the mole ratio is a, is a conversion factor. I have two moles of aluminum ions for each three moles of sulfate ions. The unit of moles of sulfate ions will strike out. And the answer is 1.3 moles of aluminum ions. Now, once I have these 1.3 moles of aluminum ions, I can perform subsequent calculations. For instance, I can determine how many grams of aluminum ions I have. I take any amount of moles, multiplying that by the molar mass of aluminum, and finding 36 grams of aluminum ions. Or, I can calculate the actual amount of aluminum ions. I take any amount of moles times the number of aluminum ions in one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, to find the total number of aluminum ions, 8.0 times 10 to the 23 aluminum ions in this case. Now, the mole ratio is a very important tool in chemistry calculations. In this example, we'll use the mole ratio in a mass percentage calculation. Here I have a sample with a molar mass of 180.16 grams. It contains an unknown element, 
and in the molecular formula that unknown element has a subscript 6. It's also given that this element contributes 40% to the total mass. Now, given these pieces of information, can you determine the molar mass of this unknown element? Now, a subscript of 6 implies that there are 6 moles of this element for each one mole of the compound. That means the mole ratio of the element over the compound is 6 to 1, or 6. One mole of the compound contributes 180.16 grams. The element contributes 40% of that, which means 180.16 grams times 40% written in its fraction equals 72.06 grams per mole of the compound. The last step I have to take is to convert the unit gram per mole of the compound into gram per mole of the element. So I have to convert 72.06 gram per mole of the compound into gram per mole of the element. I can do that with a mole ratio. Now remember, the unit here is 1 over mole of the compound. It has to be converted into 1 over mole of the element. I have to take the inverse of the mole ratio. I multiply this with the mole ratio. That's my conversion factor. And note that I have mole of the compound on top and mole of the element at the bottom. If I complete this multiplication, I convert the unit into gram per mole of the element. The answer is 12.01 gram per mole. Do you know which element has this molar mass? That's right, it's carbon.